Morning, morning, everybody. Michelle is here. Michelle is here. <laughs> On this uh, Tuesday, April the 9th, 2024. April the 9th, 2024 on this Tuesday. Hope everybody's doing fantastic, magnificently, and marvelous because I am. I am. Uh, so I wanted to come on through this morning because uh, I told you that I'm setting up some things to see how I can assist people, you know, starting this, starting that. Working on this, working on that, and, and more importantly, definitely always developing myself. Always. Developing yourself is an ongoing process forever. Forever. So, I wanted to come on through and talk about some things that kind of have been bothering me for a while. And I said, I talk about it a lot, and I call them the, the overnight experts. You know, the overnight experts. And um, I saw, I somewhat gave a, uh, an example of what I mean. And this has been happening for, since we have the, the uh, internet, since, since the internet uh, evolved itself into, the, into, a, into a sphere of its own. You know, the internet is now an entity of its own. Hopefully my face is clean. I, I mean, I wash my face, but, you know, stuff be lingering because I like to eat and snack all day. Uh, but, you know, I'm still presentable. You know what I mean? To the best of my ability. Uh, but since the inception of the Internet, the Internet has taken on a entity of its own. It's its own entity, literally, figuratively, and metaphorically. You know, a lot of people go to that entity. It's like going to another planet to get information. And, it, you know, it's, it's a valuable tool. It's a valuable tool. And it's also valuable assistance, you know, using the Internet, you know, and, uh, you know, getting information. And because, you know, everything's there. Everybody has their, like, um, have a lot of reference to certain types of this and certain types of that. And so a lot of people believe that they can just go on and take what they see from certain books, from certain authors, from certain psychiatrists, from certain philosophers, teachers, the, you know, the whole range of things. And that, that if you take what they say in their words and so forth, then that means that you can be an expert, just like they say that they are, which they may not be. A lot of people are not considering that. All because something is on the internet, someone's written books, you know, giving lectures, giving talks, giving um, uh, so-called expert advice. A lot of these people don't are not experts. Okay, a lot of them are still wet behind the ears and uh, have no life experiences at all. None. Okay, because in order to absorb the information out on these, uh, out on, out in the internet galaxy or entity or sphere, you have to have had some experience to know. Okay, is this logical? Is this rational? Is this reasonable? Does it make sense? Okay, and then applying all your other senses. Like, okay, what do I see, hear, taste? You know, all of those other, I think at least 12 sensing that we have. You know, we have to, let me let me get that, see if I can find that real quick. So in other words, um, that's, that's, that's what happened over the internet. It made a lot of people a lot of money. It made a lot of people a lot of money. And, you know, we need to make that clear and effective uh, because most people... Uh, did not want to go to a psychiatrist per se or go to a psychologist per se or wherever they needed to go to get certain um, treatment and help. They rather, they just didn't want to do it. But what the internet did was made it uh, possible for some and, and, and supposedly private and confidential. Okay, we're going to learn, a, we're, we're going to find, a, we're going to have some rude awakenings about that, okay? I'm just being, you just be prepared. 
um, about what you thought was confidential when you put it out, put it out there on the in the internet world. So I'll look for it later. But the, you know the sensings; those have to play a factor in your developing forever, forever. And that's, and that's including in your so-called field of expertise, you know, in, in your field of expertise. So the Internet opened up a lot of people to come out and, and claim anything. And they didn't have to have any proof, apparently. Just people possibly recommending them. And usually they were in a group together recommending each other. It's, you know, it's like a, a like-mindedness. Of, okay, let's come together. And uh, you recommend me, I recommend you. You recommend me, I recommend you. Know that's how it was. That's what it started happening. And so that's what I that's what I started noticing as well. Is you know I I love, like I told you, um, exploring things and, and and wanting to and and I just wanted to make make it make sense to me. Because I did to tell you I did take in my early early twenties I did go into counseling. And the counselor was, uh, you know, was very clear and effective with me that I was just going through developmental changes in my life, developmental transitionings in my life, developmental shiftings in my life. OK, and she was um, she was very clear and effective to me and, and reassured me so much. I think all of that garbage I had swirling in my head that there was something wrong with me. <laughs> That there had to be something wrong with me. Um, she reassured me, you know, in so, in so many, in so many direct words. It wasn't necessarily she was. Uh, I mean, she was direct, but she was kind and gentle about it. You know, you know, you, this is what you're going through. This is part of, uh, in, in her words, this is part of becoming a, a more so an adult. You know, because like I said I was in my early twenties, so I felt better coming out of there. You know. Um, I felt better. And and so it, it does help to open up other things in my world. Because yes, we all go, we all have chaotic um, uh, living arrangements. Meaning, what does that mean? Well, it, it depends on how you were, where, how you were gro uh, growing up, where you were growing up, who you were growing up with. Some people had both parents. Some people had one parent. Some people had relatives taking care of them grandmothers oh grandmothers nothing but love to grandmothers out there all over the world especially in the black culture the grandmothers you know i i you know wow i can go on and on and on about the power of grandmothers the power of our aunties the power of our elders you know because it does you know a lot of people say this all the time it takes a village Yes, it does. It takes a village to to develop each other, but we have scattered that all over the place. And our and, and we all know that our interpersonal relationships are fragmented. You know, in some in some cases with a lot of people, their interpersonal relationships are non-existence. Yeah, they have cousins, but they don't talk to them. Yeah, they have uncles, they don't talk to them. And I'm saying not talk to them because they have some type of unresolved. Um, uh, you know, issue with that, you know, some unresolved, um, oh God, you know, they just haven't resolved some conflict, whatever it was that caused the rift in the relationships. I, per, my, my situation is different. I love my relatives. I love my young people. I, I love my cousins, uncles, but I also know that I have to, I, but they, they have their own path. I have my own path. And just because we are not talking to each other every day doesn't mean that, that there's no love there. There's plenty of love coming from me. I'm spreading universal love to everyone. But I also know that based on my journey, based on my path, I have to go a, a, another way. I'm going in, a, in, a, in an alignment, in an alignment to where I need to be in my life, okay? There, and we all know that there are some people that are uh, complacent and they are like putting everything off until tomorrow. Well, I can't wait until tomorrow. You know, I, I need to do it today. So that counseling helped me to kind of snap out of it, Michelle. 
There's not a goddamn thing wrong with you. Now get out there and start living. <laughs> she may as well said that to me. And I and living, I did. So what I had to do is kind of re-educate myself. That's when I started doing that, that serious education. Re-educate myself and say, okay, what is really going on here in my life? And that's when I moved out on my own. I got my own studio, you know, with my own name on the lease. Okay. And then I, uh, and it was a small studio and I loved it because everything was there. I had nothing anyway. <laughs> it had a Murphy bed. Anybody ever slept in a Murphy bed? Okay, I think that's why my back out <laughs> it has been out for decades. It, you know, everything was there. Everything I need so I can just sit on the couch. And that's when I got really more immersed into meditation because I started reading these thick books on meditation, how to think. I was always into that. I was always into that type of uh, reality. It's about thinking, about developing consciousness. You know, I was always into that because I was reading philosophers, Socrates, Aristotle. I was just kind of trying to figure out what the hell is going on. Something kept pushing me to that, to that, to that space of okay, what is it? What do I need to know about my life? Since I, since I, since my, since I know I'm not crazy, <laughs> even though I felt. You know, and a lot of people feel crazy. I mean, if you're not feeling crazy when you're a young adult, then you you know you're you're in a fantasy. And a lot of times we have a lot of times as young people, yes, we were in our fantasies, we were in our imagination, but something always kept pulling us back or attempting to pull us back to reality, pull us back out of our fantasies. And but a lot of people got stuck there, and some people are still stuck there today. They are in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, I mean, and they're still in those fantasies and imagination and, and illusory thinking, delusional thinking, sadly. So I um, was always pushed towards, okay, what's going on in here? What's, what's really going on in here? I had questions about everything, my sexuality, you know, what am I supposed to do? Uh, what am you know, and so and, and along the way, making a whole lot of mistakes, making a whole lot of assumptions. So that and that comes with the territory. But I had to, and I was in a sort of a fantasy in myself because you know I you know, I, like I said about my sexuality, I would get into fantasies about that, get into imaginations about that, and we all do. So if anybody is not, if if you're not confused about something in your adolescence, whether it's about your sexuality what it means to be a man, what it means to be a woman, what career, uh, you know, and all, you know, if you don't have some type of confusion about what that all means, then you're lying to yourself and you're being delusional. Especially because I did attempt to go to my mom and ask her questions and some questions she just didn't have an answer for. So I used to go to the library that was in the area, walk to the library, attempt to figure these things out. My dad was uh, great with uh, technical things, meaning he taught me how to drive. And then I went to, you know, then I ref um, refined it when I went, when I was in high school. He, he, you know, he just taught me things about life in general because he was a visual man. I can, I know, you know, because most men are, most men are the kind of visionary types. So he kept pointing to things and telling me, you know, when you, you know, especially when I was driving, he always said, get in this lane. If and he says, always pay attention to, you know, pay attention to the signs and then, you know, wherever you need to go, pay attention and know if you're in the right lane. You know, he did all that stuff. He taught me how to drive. Like I said, he taught me how to use my hands, you know, because he, that's what he was into. You know, he, like I said, he could tear down a house and build it back up and then had the, the softness, the kindness and gentleness to uh, take care of me, my family, my mom, the grandchildren and the, and the great grandchildren and blah, blah, blah. And his, and some of his siblings as well. So developing is forever. You know, you're going to be developing forever. There's no stopping in development. So that means that you have to keep doing what? Evolving your knowledge, evolving your understanding of the knowledge that you so-called are an expert in or use certain knowledges that you've have attained to, you know, get into a career, get into this and get into that. You have to keep refining yourself. And so what was great about me when I was, um, you know, as I was, I was, I come from law enforcement, over 20 years of law enforcement. And one thing I can say about law enforcement, they do train you. 
Okay, but but then once you get out on the streets, a lot of people just take on their own what do you call it? Um own meaning to you know, or they or they just break the rules. How about that? That's more or less what happens to certain people on the streets. What, you know, if they're in the first responder position, because you we get trained. We were getting trained all the time. I got annoyed, but it made sense. You need to be trained. You need to understand the evolution of law enforcement, the evolution of being a first responder. It is constantly evolving. Hello. And that's why a lot of people miss opportunities to help people, you know, missed opportunities to save people. And some people just had that degeneracy, deviancy, and didn't really care. They knew how to get past these bias testings. Okay, I, I, I brought this up a while ago. There are bias testings out there, meaning their criteria is meaningless. It's meaningless. And, and in some cases, it has been proven to not work. But because of complacency, because of this or that or the other, you know, a lot of things got swept under the rug. But again, when I was in law enforcement, we were trained, but then we were independent, like we were independent uh, employees. And I love that, actually. I cannot work in an office. Um, I, I know that, and that's why I got out of it. Because when you are on this, and see, and that's where a lot of law enforcement was making so many fatal mistakes with these bias testing and these bias IQs and these bias philosophy psychiatry, uh, you know, uh, testing that they were giving these quote unquote future police officers. And, and they, and they were, and what they were applying is a, they weren't applying necessarily rational and, 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 uh, reasonable thinking about this. They just was, in my opinion, they wanted a certain look. Okay. They wanted a certain background. They wanted a certain pedigree. Okay, let's just be clear and fact about that. But then, you know, with the pressure of the community saying to diverse, okay, they diverse, but um, uh, that was like pulling teeth, though, for them, for especially in law enforcement, to one or two diverse. Because keep in mind, law enforcement was built on the backs of um, uh, white supremacy. Okay, and um, nepotism. And no one really wants to accept that. I, I I don't know what people are accepting right now anyway, because I don't, I you know, since I retired, I, I somewhat dis distant myself from being so concerned about what's happening. I'll pay attention to what's happening on the news. I'll pay, you know, everything is really causing effect. I'm not surprised by none of the things that uh, are causing a rift in law enforcement and the community that they're supposed to protect and serve. Okay, protect and serve is, that has to be revamped. Okay, because and 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 be very clear and effective about what does that actually mean. You know, go back to your mission statements. Okay, go back to your vision statements, or you know, and and, and ask yourself. Okay, am I? Are we still? You know, are are all men treated different? Uh, is are all people treated equally? And we know that's that's false. The the results prove themselves. So. I say this, and, and like I said, and, and I'm telling you, there's going to be a lot of danger to, more so to individuals, per se, and, and especially to the consciousness to, of millions and millions of people because of these overnight experts popping up all over the place. And they have been, like I said, since the inception of the internet, but there was no, um, you know, you, it was almost like you were at your own risk. And and that's true with everything that you anytime you decide to enter into an agreement with someone, enter into a partnership with someone, enter into a marriage. I said that it's an agreement and it's a business decision, quote unquote, or professional that has to be separated from your ego, and your this, and your beliefs, your religion, all that. When you are attempting to help someone, your ego is to let you know you need to take your ego aside. You need to take your religious beliefs. All of your beliefs, actually, put them to the side. Um, because, like I said, with my um, 
my first uh, counselor, or when I put myself into counseling, she was a, um, a fe um, you know, she was a white female of Jewish descent. You know, white female of Jewish descent. Very, I mean, I thought she was, she made me feel so good. I didn't know, you know, because I couldn't go to anybody else to get these the questions I had answered. Like I said, my mom didn't know, my dad didn't know, and of course my siblings didn't know. So, she, and then I would read books. Yes, books are fine, it's fantastic to read, but you have to be able to apply it. it has to, I have to be able to absorb it so that it makes sense to me. And she did. She made things make sense to me. She was like, Michelle, you're just developing. <laughs> you know, you do this, this, that. So what? So what? So, you know, she made me feel like, okay, girl, you're carrying all that <laughs> at your age and you're worried about this and that and that. So, again, we, some of us, based on our environment, based on our culture, based on whether I am a biological female, biological male, whether I have this going on, whether I have got that going on, you're going to have some massive confusion in your adulthood, uh, in your your childhood, adolescence, and puberty, because to be honest with you, that's what that's what it's all about. At the end of the day, that's what it that is what it is required to be a genuine human being in the true sense. You need life experiences. Period. Without them, forget about it. Forget about it. And so that's where people are hurting themselves and hurting others because they think they're experts without it without life experiences they haven't been through you know these been through any experiences that's just what i'm saying so back to law enforcement like i said we got trained and we were constantly in and uh, being trained and being um what's the word uh caught up on the, the realities of what, you know, they were, they were just attempting to catch up, even though law enforcement is like, you know, they're extremely behind in understanding people because they kept wanting to apply a single, what do you call it? A set of, um, criterias. Okay. They, they wanted to use, um, what's called, let me see if I can find it. Schematic. Schematic. Okay. They wanted to use, um, they wanted to use, it was a representation of a system of using abstract graphic symbols. In other words, I think they were got too caught up in not understanding that there's a reality to every, um, you know, when you talk about abstract, there's a reality to abstract, meaning that, okay, let's, let's look, look at it, what it means to, for abstract again. It'll make sense what I what I'm what I'm coming to in a minute. So in other words, one size doesn't fit all. Okay? It says it's a objective is an objective um, concept considered considered apart from concrete existence not practical difficult to understand so you know so there's a contradiction there you know there's a, there's a serious contradiction there and my point is one size does not fit all okay all because someone says and that's what that's that is what brought me up to, because I was having a conversation with some with some group of people and I'm not going to say where it is irrelevant and um they were talking about, because we, like I said, we all have difficult backgrounds. All of us. Some people just don't, didn't know it was difficult. They just figured that was part, that comes with the territory. Some people were able to do that. We all have difficult backgrounds. Okay. And, um, and if you, if you, if you come and claim you didn't, then you're delusional. Okay. I know some people that I knew about traumatic events that happened to them, but yet they, they go around and act like, you know, they're holy or didn't die, and they're self-righteous to a fault, you know, but anyway, so I was having this conversation with some people and someone, you know, and, um, you know, I was saying, gosh, I wish we would stop care, you know, and, and in other words, I wish we didn't have to be so concerned about whether we are, um, 
what what people diagnose us as, labeling us. And I wish I wish that was unnecessary, honestly, that we have to be labeled because then, in my opinion, it puts you in a box. All right, when people start labeling you, they put you in a box, and that's how people are able to. Uh, that's why a lot of people get all upset about it. You know, maybe maybe I don't know. Who knows? Because, you know, like I said, I think it's harmful. And I want and I said this a while back in certain videos to tell children that they are geniuses. I think that's the most harmful thing to say to, to a child or to assume. And it's usually adults doing that with their bias testing and their bias IQ testings and their bias emotional testings. You know, they they have not um, evolved any of that for almost what maybe 20, 30, 40, 50, maybe 100 years since a lot of these so-called great minds introduced it to us. Like, um, oh, let me find this one that's really popular with everybody. I can never pronounce his name, but I'm going to pull it up and see. He was a, uh, he was a Swiss psychiatrist and psychotherapist. Carl Jung, I'm not sure how you pronounce that last name, J-U-N-G. So he was um, a Swiss psychiatrist, like I said, a psychoanalyst and blah, blah, blah. He, he um, founded a lot of analy analytical psychiatry or analytical philosophies which was fantastic, magnificently and marvelous. But keep in mind, this man was born in the 1800s and he died in the uh, 1960s. So what he did was he introduced certain uh, theories and opinions. He introduced certain theories and opinions. So what that meant is that whoever came after him were responsible for, first of all, um, making sure it's still relevant. Okay, is it is it does it have the same results? Nobody wants to do that. We just say okay, you know, we just take what he's written even so far back, and and say that's that's it. Okay, and then there was Sigmund Freud. He he came along. He was younger, you know, uh, he was uh, seeking to take forward his new science, you know, so that he can, uh, you know, kind of, I, I, I'm, I'm assuming that he was attempting to, to move things forward. But they were facing some some type of resistance from certain religious groups. You know, religion always always was interfering as it is today in the development of our consciousness. I'm just gonna say it. Okay, religion is has been used for millennia, let's say, to interfere with the development of our consciousness and and allowing us to be genuine human beings in a true sense. So. I say that, I'm saying all of this is that um, I am a biological woman. Okay, that can be proven. Okay, I am a black female. That can be proven. And everything else is, you know, it's part of the, it's part of the program, so to speak, or pro, not program, but part of the development of a human being. I developing and and so what that means I have to I need to develop myself based on my individuality you know based on the essence of what 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 was the, uh, stored in my conscious my subconscious from my previous personalities okay hey take it or leave it so putting people in boxes can be um, it can be stagnation. It can cause you to be stagnated. So when I was having this group with these, with this group, these people, um, 
I said I wish we didn't have to label ourselves. I really didn't. I really wish we didn't have to uh, because because of the biased testings associated with that. We have not, uh, you know, we have not become adapt, uh, adaptive to our current situations and our realities. A lot of it is delusional and is, is non-existence, you know, and it, and it doesn't apply to everybody. You know, as I said, you know, um, it's an individual development, but we can be parallel which I love because that means we're like-minded. We're seeking, you know, some of the same values and blah, 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 you know. So, again, I think it's, it's, it's stagnation and it is holding you in a box. For example, a lot of people are uh, waking up to the fact, you know, of, of certain labeling of people. And I don't, I don't necessarily need to say it, but a lot of people start wearing those labels as badge of honor. Instead of something to, to know possibly about myself and how I can make it more reality. All because someone's diagnosed you as something doesn't mean that's who you are. Okay, like I said, I can, you know, you can prove that I'm a biological female. You can see that I am, you know, of a certain color and background because I've shared that with you. Okay, so my point is this, is that a lot of this so-called therapy out there, a lot of, so that's what, there, there's, that's where the danger is coming in, is that, like I said, people are, are reading stuff on the internet, I can guarantee you, they may take, um, a, take a, a quiz or take a test and then automatically they're certified. Okay, okay, cool. That happened with when I was in law enforcement, but we would physically go into the go into a class. The teacher would be there, you know, lecturing to us, talking to us, and da 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 da. And after we finished that course, then we got certified. So what was happening is, like I said, law enforcement is behind the ball. Okay, maybe by fifty years, maybe hundred years, because of the because of the um, uh, the. Uh, the, the refusal to change the mode of thinking, okay, and the refusal to to let go of certain standards that they were that they are accustomed to from a hundred years ago, maybe from the inception of law enforcement. Okay, it's not about protecting and serving, and they need to accept that. What's wrong with admitting that that's not even true? They, when the results speak for themselves, they love collecting data. Trust me. They love collecting data, whether it's what I'm saying, what I'm watching. You know, that's what law enforcement does. And that's all branches of law enforcement. Okay, they, they surveil the hell out of us, but then miss something so simple every time. They wonder why they can't so solve certain things, resolve certain things. It's because of the mode of thinking. And what they see, all this technology is just toys. The military is just toys to them something to abuse, something to use and abuse people with, okay? We know that. So I'm not saying anything that is not true because there is evidence and, and documentation to prove so, okay? Like, because like I said, they're the ones, and then they make the mistake. Like I said, so many people are going to be devastated because like I said, they're using this, 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 this AI technology, and then they're going to be eventually going to the quantum computing think clearly and effectively about how dangerous that is for ordinary human beings such as myself and others that are genuinely caring and loving to people and what what's going to happen so my point is this um you need life experiences and if you are claiming to be an uh, online expert without life experiences you're going to be causing more damage eventually to yourself, not to mention to others. That's why so many people that were back in the day into these um, these scams, and I'm not going to say any more about that. Like I said, they, 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 they come together as a group. They have this, uh, this target of, you know, so-called expertise. Okay. You know, and some of them may have had some experiences in certain fields. 
Okay, great. And they are allowed to call themselves a psychiatrist and a psychologist. Okay, fine. But um, a lot of them just was absorbing all of that. They didn't have any life experiences to support what they were absor absorbing. So they would give you, and I, can, and I can hear that in certain sounds and tones of people too, about whether they are, uh, they have life experiences or not, or they just have a lot of book knowledge. I can pick that out right away. So sometimes, uh, and so in other words, their um, their training is is obsolete and irrelevant, you know. And um, and I've picked that up with certain people, you know, where they are t talking to me like I, you know, and and that's fine. I don't, I mean. They talk to you they, because they do this with everybody. They talk to people as if they are the experts, but they haven't evolved themselves from the 60s, meaning the, the, the knowledge, and, and they haven't developed themselves from the 60s. They're still using the 60s somewhat mentality. Now, a lot of people are still living, and I notice this about certain people that I know. There's, it's like they're stuck in their realities of, say, the 90s, in the uh, 60s, like I said, and they don't believe they need to come out of it. They think, no, I'm right. I'm the expert here. I got blah, 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 blah. And then they'll pull out their, their uh, the, these certificates, these diplomas, and not to, not to downplay that, but it, that has to evolve and make sure it's still relevant. Because, because if someone has anxiety, their anxiety is different from my anxiety. We do not have. We do not all have the same anxiety. So you have to treat things in the, individually, and be adaptive. So and so that means sometimes your the way you use your sounds and tones are going to change with certain people. Um, when I was in law enforcement, um, if I was just talking real calm and you know certain situations did not require me being calm and gentle and kind. Does that make sense? I mean, that's that should be reasonable and logical because if someone's about to be hit by a train, and if I say, "Hey, there's a train coming," no, I, I I need to, I need to yell and make these make this person stop. Okay, I need to change my sounds and tones to make sure it it is uh, uh, appropriate in the appropriate moments. Okay, that's a training. We got trained on how to do that without necessarily, so a lot of people, but if somebody's standing around and don't know what the hell is going on, they think I'm yelling at that person or shouting at them or, you know, this or that and the other. They don't, they, you know, in other words, they have no idea what the hell is going on. And that happens so many, so many, so much. There's no problem with standing by and watching what's going on. But when you start interfering, Okay, that's where there's a problem comes in. Okay, I used to have to take control. Well, I, I mean, that's what I was trained to do is take control of the, of the scene, take control of the situation. Okay, and make sure everybody knows what their responsibilities are. You know, crowd control or, you know, paying attention to this, paying attention to that. You know, it's training. You have to be physically in there. In any life experiences, you need to be rolling in the dirt sometimes. Okay, sometimes gentle tones and gentle tones and sounds just doesn't work with everybody. I told you about the, the experience I had with this woman calling on the phone and I felt that fire and energy in her voice, but I didn't take it personally. She wasn't yelling at me, she was just yelling. She was just shouting. She was you know, and and I and I knew why because the way the people in the office was treating her. That's what that's what that was all about. And she was re she was retaliating. So anybody that came on the phone from that particular part department which I was working in, okay, they're gonna get her. They're gonna get her fury. They're gonna get her raft. Okay, but then like I said, I didn't take it personally. I didn't start yelling back and forth with her and say, well, what's your problem? You know, I mean, you can, you can do that. I, I didn't have a problem yelling in when I was on the road. I didn't have a problem getting in people's face. 
and going back and forth, back and forth. But then I knew how to be appropriate with that. I didn't take it all personally. And I wasn't necessarily, um, you know, attempting to hurt anybody per se. I would definitely defend myself. But sometimes you have to, so in other words, you got to change your mode of thinking, change your sounds and tones and range with whoever you're dealing with. Okay. And just be careful about what you expect from people. All because someone has a, all these, this, all these things on their walls. That's fantastic. I'm not downplaying that at all. You know, these certificates, these top, you know, these, you know, but a lot of them have, you know, a lot of the people that I admire have their life experiences too. They have, sometimes they have the scars and bruises, you know, they still have some of the scars of some of the battles they've had in their life, you know, growing up. I got scar, you know, scars all you know, on me in certain places as well, you know, you know. You, you need to, like I said, you need to get into the realities of life. It's not in the books. The books are just tools and guides. But sometimes, you know, you have to go back in there and reread the book and say, okay, is this relevant to my, my situation? You know, what's the results to prove that this is true? And when you get the results, then okay, okay. You know what I mean? So you you hurt. It's like a horizontal um, as well as vertical. But the, the, the most important thing is that you're moving along horizontally as you are raising yourself vertically. You know, that's, that's what I mean by raising the um, vibration of your, your consciousness, of your subconscious, you know, whatever people are using this day, these days, you know, how you raise your vibration. A lot of people are saying that. And literally... That's true, figuratively, especially metaphorically. So that's why you have to apply different levels of, of, uh, of uh, thinking, you know, appropriate thinking to make sure, okay. So the sensings I was talking about, such as uh, hearing, smelling, touching, seeing, tasting, your speech, logic, intellect, rational, your perception, your personality, movements, you know, are you grounded in reality? You know, ask yourself, you know, am I being delusional right now? Honestly, am I stuck in my fantasies about this? Honestly, because there has to be a, you have to have results and the energy needs to be, uh, you know, you, you need to make sure you are uh, in the flow of it and that it's not one-sided or extreme or fanatical. You know, it has to be, you know, it has to be a, a nice rhythm to it right a, a, a nice mel melody you know in other words um you're not delusional it's not you know what you see is what you see what you smell is what you smell you know what you taste you know you're sensing and receiving you know so as long as all those factors are there you know as i attempt to nav navigate and go on a journey go on a path, stay within my alignment, hey, there you go. Visualize. I love to visualize. You know, and uh, of course, meditate. I do, I do, what did I, what did I call it? It's like an all-day meditation. I mean, meditation is incorporated in everything I do. I'm always constantly paying attention to, okay, where are my ground, where, where are my feet? Because, you know, I, tell, I told you to go barefoot. I'm paying attention to my toes. Okay. Where am I sitting? What do I hear? You know, all that, I do that all day long. And now it's become a habit to where I don't even think about it. You know, it's not necessarily anything I need to be thinking about. It's a habit. You know, my body automatically knows that I need to pay attention to what my toes are. You know, your body and your your body will react, react to your habits. And, of course, more so your thoughts. But your body will start flowing with you. And you're in sync together, okay, without thinking about it, all right? So I want to bring that up because, um, again, a lot of people are going to be coming forward, attempting to help people, but they can barely wipe their ass properly, and they're wet behind the ears. And that's where people make a lot of mistakes because, oh, well, they're performing great on test, 
they're performing great this and they're performing great that, those tests are biased. Do, do these people have life experiences in these particular fields they choose to go into? Or can they be trained? And that's 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 fantastic too. But they but it has to be reasonable. You know, it's not because of their testing. You do have to sometimes pay attention to how you how you how what you're sensing and receiving about a person. Okay, because the psychopaths are the psychopaths, narcissistic, sociopaths, clerics, uh, all of these personality are, in, in my opinion as well, you know, a couple steps ahead of you in their deviancy and their degeneracy because that's what they focus on all day long. They may be saying something with their sophistication in their language or in their speech or in their lectures or in their teaching, but because we can't read minds right now, um, the, you just don't know what's swirling there. Sometimes the eyes will, you know, I used to be able to tell by their eyes, but it's more so their thoughts, not necessarily their words. And, um, and that way you can kind of, you know, but you have to trust yourself. You have to be honest with yourself. You're going to make mistakes. And sometimes, most of the times, luck plays a factor as well. You know, luck. You know, you have to have these trials and errors, make mistakes. And um, sometimes there's luck involved to where you have breakthroughs. You know, you have a breakthrough. You say, whoa, wait a minute. You know, and a lot of a lot of these entities does not allow that kind of thinking. They are that pyramid that I tell you about. They want it to stay as is, status quo. They don't want to. They don't want to go past that. They don't want to be open up to new uh, ideas and possibilities. And this. And the only problem with that I understand why is because everybody is attempting to do that. Give their ideas. Give their theories. Give their. And so you do have to control and manage it. But you also need to be open to it as well, and um, and not make it as such. It's a competition, you know, that people and 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 because as a matter of fact, that's what's that's what's happening. We turn our idea. What's happening is a pyramid style of turning our ideas into profit. So they want all of your ideas because they know it's not going any further than that. You know, a lot of people talk about the glass ceiling. So, as such, it's, it's never been a glass ceiling. It's a concrete ceiling. Okay, you, some people will never get past it. But like I said, those in the pyramid want you. They want all of your ideas. They want all of your, they, and they're taking it all as well and turning it into weapons, turning it into something that is advantage to them. That pyramid schemes. That's why pyramid schemes will be around forever until we change our thinking modes. That that a hierarchical style of thinking, uh, style of leadership, will be here forever, unless we change our mode of thinking. And and people are just going to be spinning in the abyss. That's why, like I said, people that started with the internet back in twenty, thirties, forties. I mean, like thirty years ago or so, they started these schemes, and they and they lied to people via the internet. Because we were gullible and we were, you know, we, it was all about greed. Hey, I admit it. I was, you know, I wanted to be a millionaire by the time I was blah, blah, blah. And a lot of people were selling that via marketing. You know, be a, be a millionaire while sitting in your underwear. That kind of thing. And a lot of those people knew it was about greed. And they knew that they, that they wanted to get in there for, you know, real quick. Throw that, throw that theory out to you. Get people signing up. You know, take all their money and then they disappear. But a lot of them coming back. You know why? Because that's causal. It's called cause and effect. They're going to get exposed. They're broke. They don't have any money now. Now what? So they, they, they're attempting to start this marketing stuff up again. I've seen faces on um, the social media platforms of p faces of people that have been around for, you know, in groups like that. Now they're in another group doing the same things. They do it with real estate especially. So many people are going to get burned with real estate. Literally. 
literally. The collapse starts. You see, you see more of the damage here, and it filters down, right? All right. So, again, I, I send nothing but love to those out there that are attempting to help people in the best way possible, being logical, reasonable, and rational about what they're doing, not so much of a hidden, hidden agenda about greed and, and, and manipulation and indoctrination and all that other stuff. You know, again, I need to be a provider for myself. So I do that. I mean, I do that as well, but I would do this and, and not get paid. I'm being honest with you. You know, when I started offering certain services, because I have been, I've been talking since 2022. <laughs> and it's 2024. <clears throat> and I don't plan to stop. How about that? So, but I need to be grounded and know I need to feed myself, you know? So I need to look at for sources of income. That's my point. While helping. And so that's why I want to incorporate things in that way where, yeah, where the mission and the vision, I mean, the, the vision statement, the mission statement, whatever they're calling it now, is clear and effective uh, as to what I'm doing. There's nothing hidden in my in my agendas, okay? And, and, and that's why I want to bring along similar like-mindedness with me in the future, you know, to help me through this as well because I'm still developing, they're still developing, they're still developing, but we can always develop together. You know, and have uh, the same virtues, the same uh, standards of living that's, uh, you know, that's positive, uh, that's uh, equal, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's freedom, it's liberation, you know. So if someone doesn't allow you to come out of a box, pay attention to that. <clears throat> meaning some people get attached to their labeling right like I said with that, that term genius do you know what happens to usually all of these geniuses if you if everybody is paying attention most of the geniuses have failed miserably this quote unquote but what happens is because we call them geniuses we don't allow them to make to fail. We don't allow anybody to fail, but especially geniuses. That's unheard of for us. That's that's how delusional and, and uh, extreme we are. So if, if so-called quote-unquote geniuses fail, then we dismiss them. We, dis, we discredit them. And so that's why a lot of them end up killing themselves, possibly, becoming reclusive, you know, sad and alone suffer depression because we don't allow them to you know they're human beings so what if they're a genius so what what's their results what's your results you could be a genius yourself and not know it does it matter no it does not matter all labeling all the de definition all the definition of labeling does not apply to everybody okay all, like I said all because you have been labeled something so what a lot of people get angry about that so I, and, and I say so what you still gotta you still gotta move you know you need to have movement in your life you need to accomplish something you need to do something right unless this physically if, unless you're physically unable to do so. But there are some that are so physically disabled, they are still fantastic in what they're developing and what they're doing. They can care less about it. It's not that they don't care about their disability. That's not, that's not what defines them. They know they're human beings. They know they, need, they still need to perform. They still need to see if they can live on their own and be independent thinkers thinking for themselves with the assistance of tools, with the assistance of uh, uh, these toys and technology. Okay, so I feel good about what I'm doing because I understand my intentions and my purpose and my mission. 
Okay? Without that, then you're just... And I know a lot of people are manipulative. I know that. Even people that are that ought to know better. They're manipulative. They want to be more powerful than they are. They're very good, sophisticated um, talkers and thinkers, oratory types, where they can manipulate everybody just to get what they want. And you have no idea that, they, that you have been manipulated, used and abused and indoctrinated. Okay? So trust yourself. Enjoy your, your journey whether you're by yourself or with others, like-mindedness, which, I, like I said, I love that. That's that parallel I talk about. Uh, we, we still have our own different paths, but we can always exchange ideas, exchange theories, exchange opinions, have discussions, have debate, not debates, uh, discussions, conversations, and, uh, and, and come off of our egos, please. Just your ego is there to protect you, but your ego can also block you, but block your opportunities because you feel as though, well, you know, I am a college graduated, blah, blah, blah. They barely finished high school. You know, we, we feel, we feel as though those, those factors cannot come together. But if you are parallel and, and relatable to each other, that's irrelevant whether you are college graduated or, you know, barely made it out of high school. It's about life experiences that is what brings us together more so than anything relatability and knowing how to approach a situation properly and approach each other too so i hope you enjoyed this uh this video you know i've been wanting to talk about it for a while like i said because i understand that 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 the the uh internet is be the internet it has lost the, the genuine mission and meaning, right? It's lost that. That's been lost for a while. So now with the 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 integration of these technologies, a lot of people are just going to be using that technology to to give the perception that they are experts because they believe what's coming out of these artificial intelligence technology. They believe it. They haven't, you know, they believe that, okay, if they're spitting this out, that means that it, that is true. That's anything but. You have to you have to use it as a tool, use it as assistance, but it has to provide results. It has to be, like I said, it has to provide. It has to be logical, rational, reasonable, reproducible, grounded in actual reality, not fantasy. So, I hope it, I hope you've enjoyed this. You know, I'm gonna have more to say uh, along the way. And um, that entity of social media is, go is just going to get more and more intense, vile, dangerous, uh, degeneracy, deviant, all that, because that's what that's what is that's you know because that's what it's swirling into, you know, a dark, uh, dark sea of of uh, toxic toxicity and it's going to be become a an, you know it is an entity already but it's going to be a, a abyssal energy you know you're going to be swirling in, a, in an abyss every now and then I like going in there to you know socialize conversate blah 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 you know and and I see it as entertainment purposes only, but but still offer value. And I'm talking about the social social media, social media. You know, I see that as entertaining, but can provide great value of developing certain people, certain kind of people. But with others, it's just going to make them more degenerate, more degenerate, more degenerate, and dangerous, dangerous, dangerous to humanity. Okay, so. I'm going to go ahead and, you know, uh, sign off for now. For, for now. And uh, I want to send peace and love all over the stars and moon and mountains. And trust me, I'll be back.